We're going to Zion. We're going to Zion. Zion National Park. I'm going to Moab. Zion. Going to Zion. Leaving Yellowstone, we decided not to stop at the Grand Tetons. Guys, we learned something about the Grand Tetons. One, the French named them. Two, this is a family show, so I can't tell you what the French named them. It's one of those things you can't avoid. It's the name. It is what it is. We drove through them. <laughs> I know you're laughing at home, but stop it. This is a family show. There's a great stop called the Glacier View Turnout, which gives you a really beautiful view of the entire mountainscape. Heading south out of Yellowstone, there's a shop with a lake right away, and then if you drive a little bit farther past Moran, Moran. Not Moran. <laughs> <laughs> That's where you find the glacier overlook. Yeah, you drive by Moran. <laughs> so it's kind of cool because there is actually, there's an airport right there, so you can actually, the planes come in right over the mountains, which is kind of cool. What you showing me, buddy? I was inside of a lot. Ooh. In this stinger. We didn't stay there long, we just took some good photos, got some good video and uh, hit the road because we were on our way out of Yellowstone. We we're trying to make our way to uh, Salt Lake City before we were going on to Zion. I had looked up this place in Jackson. There's a kind of cool antler arch and I thought it was pretty neat. I like the creativity. Matt thought it was. Oh, it's disgusting. <laughs> We drove through Jackson, and just on the other side of it, there was road construction, and we waited. And we waited. And waited. And waited. It seemed like an entire hour. And they even like had a shift change of people holding the sign, like a half hour in. Idaho on our right, Wyoming on our left. We're in Idaho. Idaho. So we drove down through Wyoming, cut over to Idaho, and stopped at Soda Springs to visit Geyser Park. Soda so Springs. this is the um, Geyser here in this town. They were able to somehow control it and put it on a timer back before these things were regulated, and so it goes off every hour on the hour. And we would have made it, but we got stuck in really ridiculous traffic, and I'm kind of sad about it. And we have a little patience to stick around for the next 40 minutes. I have patience. We made peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, got a cheap lunch, and got a treat at this place called Soda Sip. It's got Sour Patch Kids. If you like Sour Patch Kids, that's your drink. If you like Blue Raspberry, that's your drink. If you like 7-Up, that's your drink. And then you can kind of see the candy in it, the Sour Patch Kids. I did. I got more only because I destroyed each Sour Patch Kid into more Sour Patch Kids. I was a little jealous because Jill had a really killer drink that I kind of wanted. I got Endless Summer. It has um, pureed peach, 7-Up, pineapple, and coconut milk in it. It's mega good. Then we went back to the geyser, saw it go off. It was really cool. I, I enjoyed it. Definitely better than seeing Old Faithful. It goes up higher and it's cooler. From Soda Springs, we drove to Salt Lake City, Utah. We tried our best to break up the trip and break up the camping sites um, with some hotel stays along the way. Elliot's helping us decorate. Very cool. I'm excited about five billion outlets. <laughs> yeah, we went to this awesome hotel. We watched the Olympics. The next morning, we went to this place called Alpha Coffee. I had looked it up and it had really great reviews and we were excited to try it. I liked my drink. It was the honey badger drink. They should really make a yellow bellied marmot drink. <laughs> <laughs> coffee flavored coffee. Happy favorite slushy. I got an Aztec mocha at this place and it was so good. Matt got the chocolate croissant. Fire all over my face, maybe? I don't know. It's really good. <laughs> this is oh it's fine. We can take off the cheese and look at what's in my sandwich. I normally do not like the most bad food on earth called cheeks, but I really liked it. I had looked up this place called Hermes. It's on the way from Salt Lake City to Zion. So we got the fry bread and it was so good, like so good. And I got a burger that was really good, but it was so windy. It was so windy there. 
I almost blew away. Where me, like, I almost died. That one episode in Badlands, Quinn almost blew away. And uh, we stopped at the gas station right next to Hermes, and that's where Quinn found the candy that became a staple of the entire rest of the trip, and that was Sour Skittles. Everybody thank me for the family candy. <laughs> From there, we drove down to Zion. Elliot again was able to use his fourth grade pass. Thanks, Elliot. Thanks, Elliot. Thank you. You don't have to say that. Like place. Zion really delivered. We checked in at the gate, got our campsite, and right away there was a deer in our campsite. It even pooped right by our campsite, which was just very nature -y. A little gift from Zion given to us. And then all of a sudden we're checking our phones and there's flood warnings like crazy. Everywhere we had gone so far, it had rained. We didn't do much that first night besides setting up camp. We just kind of walked around where the campsite was and um, just kind of soaked it all in. When we woke up, we decided to head to the Narrows. We checked with the park and it was open that morning, so we decided to give it a try. The hike I was most excited about was probably the Narrows in Zion. I kept referring to Zion as Moab and everyone's like, Zion. Zion. I have no idea why in my head the two got mixed up. So there's a little bit of a hike before you get into the river itself. I had read that you could get walking sticks and somehow I missed that it was like on the outside of the park coming in. I thought it was outside of the hike. We did have water shoes, which really came in handy. We're glad that we had those. We are trying water shoes. Let's see how this goes. The water looked like creamy decaf coffee. We always say decaf because I can't, I cannot handle caffeine. You do not want to see me on caffeine. This looks like a river of decaf. And it's totally doable uh, with kids. Uh, our boys at the time were eight and 10. And they just did a killer job helping each other through some of the more difficult spots. You couldn't see where the rocks were, so you had no idea if you were about to walk into a rock this big or a rock this big. I would have been able to stand if I had seen where the ground was, but I couldn't see where the ground was. But I went in and I slipped in and went all the way in. Otherwise, we were all fine. In our water shoes, no hiking sticks, we were great. So there's this place called Mystery Falls, which apparently I know nothing about. <laughs> For me, it's a mystery why it's called Falls, because it's just a wet rock. <laughs> Probably, what, two hours in? But every time like you go farther, it's like, hey, we could go a little bit farther. Like, we're going back. I just want to see that, that thing over there. No, no. no I just no want to see that. No more. I just want to see that. The Narrows was really cool. Yeah, that was our most memorable hike of the whole trip. Maybe even ever. The whole hike back was full of squirrels. They just freak me out. They're giant fat rats with fuzzy tails. Chipmunks, totally cool. Down with chipmunks, love them. But squirrels, no. Jill is just terrified of squirrels, and it was really funny just watching her like try to evade all of them. A lot of people were entertained by that. I think some people stayed behind us just to watch me being afraid of squirrels. That vibrated my lips. Oh, the itch. So yeah, that was about it for that day. Angel's Landing spoke to Matt. I woke up early at 5.30. Uh, the buses took off at 6. I wanted to make sure that I got there really early. I think it would speak to me if they had like a four-star Michelin restaurant with Taco Bell prices at the top. You would find me at Angel's Landing. I didn't feel comfortable never having done it before, um, going up solo with two kids. I think if it had been one-on-one, -on -one, uh, might have considered it. But for us, we just waited and figured that I could tackle it myself to have a good understanding of what it might take um, in the future. A little secret for you, I'm a little bit scared of heights. Um, but if there's some chains and there's a little bit of space, which there is on Angel's Landing, um, it's not too bad. We've got another bonus video that we'll show that'll uh, I'll talk a little bit more about the hike itself. Um, but it was just amazing, a great view. And I don't know, like one of those bucket list things where you hear about this hike all the time. I just felt like I had to do it. But take a peek, here's the view.
So the boys and I just kind of had a lazy wake up and um, hung out and we made pancakes and Matt comes strolling up. So it was like perfect timing. So I just done this huge hike, got to come back, have some pancakes. He had finished it before we had even cleaned up for breakfast. And then he's like, what's next? Let's go. I had looked at going to the Emerald Pools and it is so hard to decide. We didn't have time to do the full hike. So there's the upper pool, middle pool, and lower pool. We decided to do lower, uh, which is really fun. It's not bad. It's a pretty easy hike. It was kind of a warm day. It was really sunny at the time. It was like a circle thing, like just imagine like a crater, like a circle gap, what you gonna call it. The part above you has the water coming, cascading down, and then you're getting misted and sprayed by the water. I really liked the waterfall when it sprayed us. And it was pretty slippery, but it was super cool. Our buddy Mike is like, bring a football, bring something to just hang out at the lodge. That's the stop, the shuttle stop we took to do this hike. I saw a fight like that in seventh grade once. It's bad. What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> and we got to the lodge and it started to rain. <laughs> um, but I'd recommend it. It seemed like it would have been cool if we'd been able to do it. Instead, we were driven into the gift shop to find more things to buy. We get a flash flood warning. Everybody's phones in the bus started going Why so much rain? It's like flooding in here. If you look back, there's like, there was like a whole river of rain on the sidewalk. Now we gotta check our site, our tent, to see if anything happened. Nope. Here we go, not bad. How about the clothes? My laundry. I worked on this when it was hot and sunny. Now look, I could've just put it out here and let the rain do it itself. <laughs> so the nice thing about uh, these campgrounds is that they do have drainage around the sites, which I'll show you. So everything drains into the river, but right under our tent or around our tent too. So we decided it was the perfect day to eat out. The next day we got up and we decided to do laundry in town as well. We grabbed some food on the way out of town and we went along the scenic uh, Zion and Mount Carmel Highway. There's this really cool long tunnel that we yelled stuff in. We rolled all the windows down and just kind of yelled. Thing, and you could hear other people yelling and hear their echoes in this tunnel. Also on the scenic route, we saw the Great Arch. There's something so amazing and beautiful about these stone structures. There's one last hike that we stopped at. It's called Canyon Overlook. It's not like super easy, but it's not super hard either. Um, and distance wise, it's not too far. Um, but once you navigate it and you get to the end, it's just this really beautiful overlook of the entire Zion Canyon. There was a, a nice breeze and it's just really invigorating to take in all that nature. <laughs> Look at all that nature. So yes, you can do 72 hours in Zion. Like we've said, kind of like with Yellowstone, um, you can obviously spend a lot more time here. We would easily spend a week or more. I think yeah. there's plenty to do, plenty to experience, great hikes. And I think I would try to stay in this campground again. South campground. But it's tricky because I think it opens for booking like a week or two before. 14 days, you have four, 14 days. You gotta make sure you're on it. Yeah. Because so it fills up quickly. If you miss it, <laughs> you might not have a place to stay. Zion had some of our greatest adventures and some really great hikes. Go there when you can, if you can. I would highly recommend going back to Zion. It was so fun. Yeah, I would totally go back if I could. There's a video that's coming on Angel's Landing and that experience that I had. So coming up next is Bryce Canyon and the Belly of the Dragon. Make sure to subscribe, click the bell so you can see the rest of the series. And we'll see you next time. What's this? Don't go The bad bitch does nothing to help. The toilet! <laughs> I don't care about goldfish! Well, goldfish! Poop!